Evelyn to Phil, March 3rd, 1943, 7 p.m. Phil, dearest, I'm writing this at Ethel's on stationery I borrowed from Mickey. Today was a crazy day. It snowed heavily and was for reason cold. In the afternoon, after the snow had settled on the ground, the sun came out. Freda, Max, and Emma Grinshaft came in last night, and Emma and Max slept over our house. We couldn't get a taxi, so we had to take the bus and subway to Levine and Son in all that snow. Tanta looked very beautiful in the coffin, at peace with the world, with the suggestion of a smile on her face. Harry took page two, it very hard, and cried like a baby. They all did. Mom held up fairly good. She was buried at Mount Sharon. Ruth took care of Adele all day and does a fine job, too. Please her, send her some sort of trinket to please her girlish heart, will you, sweet? She called here at three and read me your Monday letter, the one in which you say no news is good news. No truer words were ever spoken. It was a very sweet letter, dear, and I promised to write to Red tomorrow without fail. I received a card from Smartform to call for my girdle. I'll wait till my check arrives so I can pay for it. Page 3. The gas heater began to make funny noises this morning, and I immediately called the gas company after turning off the heat. Some dirt had gotten into the left valve and caused the noise. He said that it might happen any time, and turning off the heat for a while will make it correct itself. Everyone just adores your little girl, sweet daddy, and I hardly wonder she's that adorable. Freda thinks I look well. Dave has been put into 1A, but is hoping for a defense deferment. Mom is going to sit Shiva here till Monday, so I'll be head of the house for a few days. If, page four, for any reason I do not find time to write, please understand, baby. I'll say good night for now, Phil, dear, because I'm very tired after such a day. I love you, my precious husband, and always will. Your adoring Evie. P.S. You and Ben were the only ones absent, but I think it's just as well. Hope you don't mind. Philip to Evelyn, Wednesday, March 3rd, 6 p.m. Darling, what can I say? When I read your letter this morning informing me of Tante Shuja's passing last Monday, my first impulse was to go immediately to my CO for an emergency furlough. But when I reconsidered after the shock had worn off a little, I realized that Tanta was interred yesterday and my arrival two days after the funeral would only serve to excite new outbursts of grief. Therefore, I decided to refrain from my first impulsive plan to go home. I can't believe it is actually so, although, like you, I've had a premonition. It struck me forcibly when, on that Sunday, I went to see her. She burst into tears. Hopeless tears, I thought at the time. I felt she knew her end was near, and it struck me as incongruous with the evident, or should I say the apparent, insignificance of her ailment. The cause of her demise still puzzles me. I never dreamed that her ailment was potentially fatal, although I did know it was incurable. My heart goes out. Page 2. To all the family and all who knew Tante Shuge, for she was one of God's good people. I well know how her loss will be felt by all, for I feel it keenly myself. As hard as I tried to put it out of my mind today, I simply couldn't, and in the middle of the hubbub around me, we were very busy, I found myself being startled suddenly out of a reverie, only to lapse into another a moment later. My greatest concern is for mom. I'm worried about her reaction. 
so much so that I am going to call you tonight to hear firsthand how she is taking it. I can well understand too, baby, the strain you have been under these past few days and admire the courage and foresight you displayed in letting me know about it after the worst was over. I know, honey, how much you wanted me there when it happened and what it meant to you to so unselfishly give up the moral support I could have afforded you. If you had wired me on Monday, I'm sure I could have been there for the funeral in spite of what the Red Cross said. And as much as I love you for the motives that impelled you to spare me the grief of the family, I can't help feeling that I should have been there. But I can't scold you for acting as you did, sweet, fully appreciating as I do what was in your heart and mind at the time. I'm anxious to know if Harry and Ben were there for the funeral, but I shall know, soon know all. Your Phil. Letter from Dot Cohen, a family friend to Philip. March 3rd, 1943. Dear Phil, I don't remember whose turn it is to write, so I'll start. My leg is much better and I don't limp anymore. Last week I went in town and bought myself a pair of blue alligator shoes and a bag to match. I also bought three dresses. One is a green with white polka dots, washable silk, with a red linen jacket. The dress is sport with, page two, a gathered back. Another one is a red suit. It is something like linen, but it isn't. The last one is a blue and white check taffeta, two-piece. I don't know if you are interested, but I have to have something to fill up space. I weighed the baby Monday, and he weighed ten and a half pounds. He gets two teaspoons of orange juice, page three, every day, and it gets increased one spoonful every Friday. He looks more and more like me every day, poor kid. His eyes are still blue and his hair is getting lighter. He's a pretty good kid and he is beginning to coo. The next letter I write will be more prompt. So answer page four soon. Love dot. P.S. We are going home Sunday. <laughs>